Welcome everyone. Welcome to Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Live. My name is Terry White. It's my pleasure to walk you through one of my quick tips on how you can adjust multiple images in Lightroom Classic CC. So I just want to give a shout out to everyone in the room. I see uh, Adobe Jason's in the house. Uh, what's going on, man? I see Manny, Rico, Aria, Aria, Victoria, and everyone else is watching. I see some folks on Twitter watching as well. Welcome, welcome, welcome and uh, Photo Racer 10 has joined. So with that said, we're not gonna, we're gonna spend a lot of time doing shout outs. I'd like to really just jump into these Lightroom streams because we keep them short and get right to the topic at hand. So with that said, let me go ahead and switch over to my computer so you guys can see what I'm doing here. I've got Lightroom Classic CC open with a recent photo shoot that I've done. And this particular shoot, um, as you can see, I focused in on uh, well, and thank you and lighten up. I appreciate that. I focused in on um, several of uh, several images that were kind of taken about the same time, different poses, different looks for the model, but kind of, you know, the same background, same lighting, same everything about this particular photo. Now, if I wanted to adjust one of them, of course, I can hit the develop module. I'm going to develop and I could, for example, apply a lens correction, which I normally do. I would apply perhaps in the basic panel, uh, maybe just a quick check on the white balance here, since I have a nice gray background to work with, and maybe I would bump up the exposure. And oh, not that much, but that kind of takes care of that one photo. But if you wanted to do multiple photos, or if you wanted to do the same adjustment to multiple photos at the same time, there's a couple ways to do it. Now, if I go to the very next photo, you'll notice that there is a previous button down here in the bottom right-hand corner. That's what the previous button is for, is to say, hey, whatever you just did to that last photo, do it again, do it to this photo. So you could just, you know, do previous, pre next, previous, next, previous, next, previous, and make adjustments along the way if you don't want to make the same adjustment to every single one. However, today's topic is about adjusting multiple photos at the same time. So let me show you a little bit or, or show you what happens when you select multiple photos. Let me go ahead and grab the rest of these. And you go back into the develop module. So in other words, when you grab two or more and you're in the develop module, you'll notice that the bottom changes from previous to the word sync. And this is, this is what it defaults to. So if you're new to Lightroom Classic, it defaults to sync. What you want to do, or what I recommend doing, is going ahead and flipping the switch on that so it says auto sync. What that means is that I don't have to manually click the button every single time. When I go in and adjust two or more selected photos, whatever I do to one will automatically happen to all the other ones that are selected. I don't have to think about it, I don't have to click on it, I don't have to do anything extra, just select the multiple photos, hop into develop, and do whatever it is you want to do. So for example, if I do that same thing, apply the lens correction, and go back to the basic panel, and let's go ahead and just, uh, just tweak that white balance just a bit, didn't need a whole lot, and if I adjust the exposure, I'm gonna crank up the exposure a lot so you can see the difference. It will start applying that to all of those photos at the same time. You can even see it happening in the film strip pretty quickly there, and if I go back out, I can see that it's done it all. So to all the selected photos, they all get the same treatment. They all get that same white balance, same lens correction, same um, uh, exposure adjustment, so forth and so on. And if I reset, it would have reset them all. If I go back into develop and I say, ooh, what was I thinking? That's a little too much exposure. I don't want it to be quite that bright. Adjust it down. Again, they will all adjust at the same time. So I never have to think about uh, as long as I turn that auto on, I never have to think about doing it manually. It will just automatically happen when I select two or more photos. Okay, so here's, um, here's another couple of tips along the way since we got a few more minutes to do this. So um, first and foremost, if you didn't have the auto turned on, so let's say that we go to this photo and we make an adjustment to it, we'll um, crank up the vibrance a little bit and we'll again uh, make that exaggerated exposure adjustment. You know what, maybe not ex exposure, maybe we'll do shadows. Yeah, we'll get the shadows the way we want them. And, um, and we just did it to that one photo. Now, you get previous as long as you're in this session. 
as soon as you get out of the session, go on, move to other photos, don't, don't do the previous, then the previous button won't work. In other words, it will think, hey, you know, you've gone beyond that last adjustment, so therefore I can't do the previous thing you just did. But what you can do, on the left side of the develop module, you've got copy and paste. So you could, for example, let's say I wanted to make these make um, some, some of these a black and white. Uh, let's go into my black and white presets. And let's use that one. Okay, so I made that a black and white. And not my favorite black and white, but I made it a black and white. I can now copy, and I can tell it what to copy. So I can tell it to copy nothing but what I check. So just do this, just do that just do the color treatment, so forth and so on, just do those things. Or I could say, do everything. Do everything I've done to this photo to whichever photos I now paste this onto. So if I hit copy, it's copy those non-destructive adjustments, and then I can come here, for example, and do a develop module, and do a paste. And it will paste that adjustment after the fact. So you could do this at any time. You don't. It doesn't have to be in sequence. It doesn't have to be, hey, you just did it, so now you have to do it immediately. If you see a photo you've adjusted, you can, of course, go ahead and adjust it, um, you know, copy and paste those adjustments later. All right, next up. Um, this is one that I do all the time. I want to crop multiple photos. So I want to crop some of these portraits or these portrait orientations into a more suitable Instagram photo. And if you didn't get my last tip on doing this for Instagram, uh, when we go into the develop module and we go to crop or just hit the letter R, if you want to not have to crop off or adjust your image after the fact, you can do it now and just crop to a four by five aspect ratio. When I do this, it will, you can see what it's doing in a film strip. It's doing it to all of them. Now I'll still be able to go into individual photos and adjust the crop further, um, if I need to, but like for those first five or six, it did it great. And if I deselect and then go to this one, I can say, ooh, I don't like the way it did that one. Let me move that one down some more. And no, I don't, or only, yeah, I did that one as well. I don't like it, the way it did that one. Let me adjust that one separately. So you don't lose the ability to go in and adjust them separately. You can do your crop after the fact. Okay, last but not least, presets can also be applied to multiple photos at the same time. So for example, if I select, let's say, some of these that I didn't do anything to yet, and I'm holding down the command key to do a discontiguous selection, PC, that would be control key. Um, if you have multiple photos selected and you want, here's another quick tip, and you want to select just one photo without having to deselect them all and reselect the one photo, if I click on the one photo, then that becomes what's called the most selected photo. So that's what's going on here. But if I just want this one photo selected without all the rest, and I don't want to have to do two clicks, if I click outside the thumbnail area, in other words, outside of the photo itself, it will just select that one photo and deselect the rest. So um, back to what we were doing. That was a quick tip. All right, let's go in and finish selecting here. And now that I've got these selected, I can go into my develop module, hit the letter D again, and just like we did the preset for the black and white, you can also use your own presets. So for example, I have one called bronze tone, which is kind of like a split tone, sepia tone kind of thing. I can go ahead and apply that and it's applying it to all the photos that I have selected because the auto sync is turned on. I'm glad, uh, Kavicha, if I'm saying that correctly, that you like that quick tip. I know it's one of my favorite quick tips too. All right, so um, one more. We got time for one more. One more thing that you can do. Uh, and this is this is old school. This is like Lightroom 1 or 2.0 that had this feature. Uh, and I often forget about it. So let me undo this one. Let me undo this. Let me undo that. And let's say that I want to apply that bronze tone to photos as I go. In other words, I don't want to have to select them first. I kind of want to look at it as I go. And I don't want to have to do it in a develop module where I can only see one at a time. I kind of want to look at this grid, but I want to quickly apply something to multiple photos without me having to do the selection first. Oh, how do we do that? Well, <clears throat> if you got your toolbar turned off, which I do now, hit the letter T to turn on the toolbar. That'll bring this toolbar up. 
Then once you're in the toolbar, you want to make sure that when you go over to the right hand side, that the painter is checked. That will give you this paint can option. If it's unchecked, like now, it just simply takes the paint can off the bar. So this basically lets you customize the toolbar just with the tools that you'll use or the features you'll use on a regular basis. All right, so let's go in. We got the paint can now. And with the paint can, you can choose what it applies. It can apply keywords, labels, flags, rating, metadata, and settings, as well as rotation and target collection. So if I go to settings, I can say that I want to use, I already tried it earlier, but I want to use that brown split tone that I just did. And now I can say, do it to these. And it does those. I'm just dragging across those photos. Do it to these. Do it to these. So just quickly dragging as I go, which ones I want that to apply to. And um, in most cameras now, when you shoot vertical versus landscape, it will automatically apply that to the metadata so it comes in the correct way in Lightroom. But if you ever ran into a situation where it didn't or you wanted to whatever reason adjust them separately, you can even do rotation. So I can do rotate right clockwise or rotate left or flip. Maybe for whatever reason, I need these images facing the other way. So I could go in and flip them over quickly, just the ones I need flipped over, the ones where she's facing one way or the other, but not the ones where she's facing straight on. So this allows me to quickly apply this uh, facing on the photos that I want as I drag it through. So, uh, Eric says, awesome tip. Uh, Randy says, great tip. Um, where's that gang? <laughs> All right, I don't know what that means, Peter. All right, but anyway, hope you enjoy these tips for adjusting multiple photos at the same time. There are multiple ways to do it. Copy paste, using the auto sync, using the previous button, using the spray can, multiple ways to do it. And depending on what you need to do, they can be quick and easy and fun because it's all non-destructive. So with that said, folks, thanks for watching. Thanks for catching me live here on the Lightroom channel. I'm on the Lightroom channel the third Thursday of the month, which is today at 1 p.m. Pacific time each month with hopefully some quick tip like this that will benefit you in your Lightroom Classic and Lightroom CC use. With that said, thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. I even had a couple minutes to spare. Uh, and I didn't see any questions, so, oh, never checked out the pen can. All right, so, could be you learned something. All right, cheers, everybody. Bye.